Hello, I want to talk to you this evening about problems we've had with power cuts or brownouts as we seem to be getting. That's where your main supply drops from this usual 230 volts to perhaps well, less than 200. Um, we're allowed down to, to 216 volts in the, uh, in the UK according to Wikipedia. Um, so we're dropping well below that. I'm measuring now as you can see on the setup about 240 volts coming in from the mains and that's typical typical for here anyhow uh, I've spoke to their electricity board and they're blaming it on the swans which are knocking out the power uh, and they claim the swans hit the lines breakers trip out they're clever enough to realize the power has been uh, interrupted for a few seconds then it re enables a breaker so we get power back but the power is not tripping out for as long as that. It's literally um, tens of milliseconds it's going out for, or that's what it seems like. So just to record what's going on, I've knocked together an Arduino and um, a data logger board with a real-time clock on it um, to record such out outages. Uh, the Arduino is going to be powered by a battery pack, which is plugged into the main. So if we do have a power cut, the Arduino will still keep running and record such an outage um, and it won't be affected by the blip in the mains. Uh, when we do get a power cut, uh, and only when we get a power cut or brain out, uh, data will be written to the onboard SD card as a CVS file. Uh, I can re then read it back in Excel. Uh, should, should, well it works, you know, the, the circuit's there in front of you. Um, I'm going to run through a few demos in a minute with you uh, just to show you what's going on and how we can prove what, what's happening. So if you stand by, we'll set up for that and uh, away we go. Oh, that's a little bit of a zoom in on the meters. What we're measuring on the right, 238 volts. That's the mains incoming power to the property. The 3 volts, which you can see, 3 volts DC, um, is what I'm monitoring that is being fed to uh, an analog port on the data logger board uh, which is then fed to the Arduino. Uh, the 3 volts is derived from an AC power supply which is about 20 volts output from the AC power supply. We've then rectified that, put that 20 volts which it is, 20 volts AC across a potential divider which are just simply two resistors, a 20k and a 100k and I'm measuring across 20k. Um, so that's what I've got when the power is good. I can simulate the power drop into about 216 volts uh, with a flick of a switch. So you see the difference on the left, uh, 2.7 volts compared to 3 volts DC. You, also the, the incoming voltage isn't affected because I'm not interrupting that. I'm purely putting a lower voltage onto the AC power supply uh, of about 216. Now, the difference, 3 volts down to 2.7, is being recorded by the Arduino because I've sent, set various thresholds in the Arduino sketch for it to identify a, a low point. Once it's identified a low point, i.e. a brain out or a power cut, in fact, even, um, the Arduino will write a line to the CVS file and I'll be able to read that back at a time that suits me because believe it or not I'm not watching the mains 24 hours a day I've got other things to do so this is like a little watchdog for me is sort of watching what's going on with the power so we'll uh, you, you, let's turn around to the scope that's not the best picture on the scope there I don't believe uh, just bear with me so we can zoom in on the scope and you can uh, also see what's going on. Okay, that's zoomed into the scope. Not the best picture I've ever seen. Uh, all that doing is actually is literally clipped across uh, the DC voltage we're, we're monitoring. So if I flick the switch and go into brownout mode, you can see there's a dip in power there. Not massive, but remember we're taking the 240 volts down to 20 volts AC, rectifying it, then reducing that even more across a potential divider. So that's me simulating the brain aid. Um, I'll go over and I'll switch the main supply off totally uh, and you'll see there's a more of a dip because 
we're only dropping the mains input by about 15 volts but that's small enough to be simulated uh, that's small enough to be read by the Arduino all right we're still measuring across the three volts DC line that's feed in the Arduino but this time I'm going to switch off the power to the AC power supply we're using so I've switched that on and off as quick as I can and you can see there's obviously a, a dip there that's quite easily measurable but this is a total loss of power for a split second as opposed to a reduction in power but both are being captured by the Arduino which I'll show you in a few seconds uh, that's what division are we on there we're on half uh, half of all 500 millivolts per division there so on and off as quick as I can so that's dropped almost to zero and we can look at the time time base is set to I'm reading it now uh, 250 milliseconds so <clears throat> we're measuring quarter of a second interval quite quite easily there So yeah, that's all being picked up on the Arduino. To give a little bit more detail on this, what I'm actually doing is measuring an analog port coming in from the data logger board to the Arduino. Uh, and I'm measuring a rectified AC supply coming in from the mains. So as the voltage will drop during a brownout, the output feed into the Arduino board will also drop. Within the Arduino sketch, I've set thresholds uh, to be monitored. So once the input level to the Arduino becomes too low or below the predetermined level set, it will write a single line to the SD card as a CSV file, not a CVS, which is a chemist in America, a CSV file. Um, and as you can see on the screen here, uh, it time logs a date, time, and the value of that particular input, um, which is, a, as I say, an analog value uh, on an analog port on an Arduino. It'll measure between zero and 1024. Um, I'm input in the maximum of three volts um, and how the Arduino sketch is set up anything below 595 um, will flag up as a brain out now 595 is just arbitrary figure that I've put in that works with the particular sketch I've written and the AC power supply I'm using if you wish to replicate this you're gonna to have to change those threshold values within the Arduino sketch all the details are in the sketch or the accompanying notes if you wish to do that. So that's the brownout detector anyhow. Uh, I hope that's made some sense to you. That's going to be sitting in a little cupboard monitoring our mains from now on. Like I say, it's uh, it isolated from the mains using a, an AC transformer. I'll show you that in a minute when I've disconnected it. So. You, I'm perfectly safe in doing what I'm doing here. You've got 230, 240 volts coming in, going through a fully isolated main step-down transformer. That's been rectified using a full-wave bridge rectifier, and I'm getting about 20 volts out of that. That 20 volts is being put across two resistors. The lower value resistor, R2, that, that's the actual where we're actually monitoring the voltage just feeding the Arduino. From left to right, then, uh, the brain aid detector consists of an AC power supply, that's AC to AC, 20 volts out, uh, rectified to DC, and that voltage is put across a potential divider. You've got the battery pack that will feed the Arduino when we do get a power cut, so its recording of the situation is still intact. It'll still be written to the SD card quite happily. And if we have a power cut, for oh, that power pack's good for a couple hours to feed the Arduino, so I'm only really measuring for brain outs, um, and it'll be perfect for that. Just make sure you get a power pack that's happy to be charged and feed an output to the Arduino at the same time, and make sure the power pack doesn't cut out uh, when it's feeding the Arduino. 
Uh, the Arduino doesn't take a lot of current and some of these power packs go to sleep. So make sure yours stays awake. If not, just put a uh, perhaps a USB light in the uh, power pack as well. You can get plug-in LEDs uh, so it'll keep the power bank alive. What you see on the breadboard below you isn't quite what you'll see on online. Online is a, a breadboard I've developed that actually you can easily make out how it's wired. The one below you is a bit like Spaghetti Junction. Uh, so the one online is much easier to understand how it's all connected together along with a schematic diagram and a parts list. So yeah, we'll go for a, a close-up in a minute and uh, see if you can have a little look. And a little bit more of a close-up of the breadboard and the Geek Robot SD stroke real-time clock board that's sitting on top of an Arduino Uno. Uh, all the details are in the description. There's a link to a Google Drive for the sketch and uh, the breadboard layout etc and a bit of a easy to understand description uh, written up for you so if you've got any questions please feel feel free to leave them in the comments uh, if you think the video is useful then yeah please thumbs up would be greatly appreciated hope you've enjoyed it